Hey everybody, welcome to Take Off with John Clark, presented by Rivers Casino. And obviously the big news in Philly, tough, tough news again for Joel Embiid and the Sixers. He is injured. That meniscus is torn. He's going to have surgery this week. And we don't know how long he's going to be out right now. Could it be a month or two, or is the season over? Well, I'm told that hopefully he will be able to return at some point. The Sixers are expecting and hoping that his season isn't over, but we don't know until after the surgery happens. So we caught up with a very, very good resource here. He is an expert on injuries, and he knew Joel Embiid would need surgery when he saw it happen and the type of injury he has. Here's our conversation with Dr. David Chow. He was a longtime head physician with the Chargers, and he has dealt with this kind of injury before. All right, and there is no better person to go to when you have an injury situation here in Philadelphia, Dr. David Chow. We welcome him in, of course, former longtime head physician with the Chargers, and as you see it right there, Sports Injury Central. So SICscore.com. I always go to you when I'm watching games because you always know what's going on. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. Sorry to uh, miss you in Vegas. Uh, I'm going tomorrow, but uh, that's how we met because of the Eagle stuff, right? And, Absolutely. Uh, but at our website, we've got a uh, former Chicago Bulls doctor. I worked some in the NBA. I know I'm called pro football doc because of the 17 years as the head team position, but we do NBA stuff too at the website, and uh, that gets into full gear at the end of football season here. Yeah, and unfortunately, I have asked you a lot of times about Joel Embiid, the MVP of the league last year, probable MVP this year. When you hear that he is going for a corrective procedure in the next few days for that lateral meniscus injury, we're all thinking it's a tear of some sort. What do you think is going to happen? Well, you know, and thanks for asking the question that way. I have not examined Joel Embiid. This is based off of what I would call insider knowledge versus insider information, right? Big difference. Haven't examined him, haven't looked at his MRI. But when it started with knee issues and problems and uh, there was some worry about some lateral meniscus injury, that's when we were saying, unfortunately, he's not going to repeat as MVP. He's not going to get in 65 games. The, the new minimum. And now with the report, with the original report of Lauronis's injury, we were noting that this is not the first time. In 2019, he had a lateral meniscus tear that required surgery in the same knee that was trimmed back. So now with the new tear, that means there's a re-tear or further tearing. There's nothing wrong with the surgery that was done. That can't happen. But obviously this means you're going to lose more meniscus or it's a worse situation. And once the report came that it was a displaced flap, we were always hinting at surgery as a realistic possibility of not if, but when. But once it was a displaced flap, it's very clear that he needed surgery now. And now the wording is to have it repaired. Now, if it is a true repair, John, with sutures, He's out for six months, not a chance of returning this season, and it might even linger into next season. But a lot of times, reports of repair means fixing the tear of the problem, and it may mean a trim, which means more meniscus loss, a quicker recovery, but we're still saying at this point in time, it's more likely the end of his season, including playoffs, than not. Just because, A, lateral meniscus tears take longer to recover, and we can get into the reasons for that. This is not his first lateral meniscus surgery. And quite honestly, you want to be careful with the big guy in terms of longevity and his long-term history, long-term injury going forward in terms of arthritis. So uh, I'm sure the Sixers will be careful and do the right thing, but more likely than not, this easily could leak into the playoffs and potentially end his season. So, so I did speak with somebody from the Sixers, and it is their perspective that they don't expect this to be a season-ending surgery. So is it possible they could do an arthroscopic procedure? Is there anything like that that could get them back on the court in six to eight weeks or something? Yes, you're right, John. It would be an arthroscopic surgery, and the hope would be 
to return him in six to eight weeks. But it's not the guarantee. I think you always want to leave hope alive, but in the end, you want to do what's right. Even as this case has developed, as we look at it from afar, it was an injury to the lateral meniscus, quote, injury. And they're deciding what to do. I'm like, if he really has a lateral meniscus injury, I think they're hoping against hope that they can try and salvage the season as opposed to going to a scope. I get it. He doesn't want to call it an end of the season or take the time off at this crucial time. And the team doesn't want him to, but I think everyone wants him to do what's right for his knee in the long term, and that's a scope. And lateral meniscus tears will take a minimum of six weeks for recovery, minimum. That already takes it to the precipice of the playoffs right there and then. And then is his, you know, is his fitness there? Is he able to get back and get ready to go? This is where I am not being uh, going against your sources. I think your sources, your sources are always excellent that they're not expecting the surgery itself to be the end of the season, leaving hope alive. But from a pragmatic point of view, even with the trim, we may end up there. Hey, celebrity cook Steve Martirano is bringing his Italian-American cooking back home to Philly, where it started. Enjoy Martirano's Prime at Rivers Casino and Steve's famous meatballs with Sunday gravy, prime steaks, and more. So make reservations for Martirano's Prime on open table. I've been to the one in Fort Lauderdale. I'm glad it's back in Philly. It's interesting to me, Doc, because you mentioned that he had the lateral meniscus tear in the same knee and they removed a small portion of the meniscus that is officially from the surgeon. So, so let's say, let's say 15 to 20% of that meniscus is gone. So if they were to remove another 15 to 20%, what is the long-term outlook for Joel's knee that you're, you're continually scraping away or carving out parts of the meniscus? Well, the good news is when you lose parts of your meniscus, you still have articular cartilage. So the meniscus is a padding. You're not bone on bone because you lose meniscus, but you're more likely to wear out the surfaces of your knee. It would be optimistic to think that last time he lost 15 or 20%, and this time he loses another 15 or 20%. Usually that's more than that the first time and maybe the second time. And then you start to get into worries about long-term, how much cushioning is left to protect the lateral articular cartilage in terms of arthritis. He's a big man, right? And uh, a lot of force across that knee. And undoubtedly, some of the time missed this season has been to swelling, and that may be related to wear and tear. So it is unfortunately a downhill run for Joel Embiid. The question is how steep is that slope downhill? Is it gradual over many, many years, which is what we all hope for? Remember the last lateral meniscus tear was in 2019. It wasn't exactly last year. So at least he's had a number of years, almost five years since the last one. So can he function for another few years on this knee? We certainly all hope so. But in the long term, this does signal he's headed towards arthritis, but hopefully he can still have quite a career before that all uh, takes over. And, and it's interesting. I was talking to a few people and, and they were saying it's possible that uh, when they go in for this procedure, that they don't necessarily know the outcome just yet. Is that the case? Like, could they say, okay, maybe we can just do this. Or if they get in there and they see, well, we think a full repair is necessary. Is that a possibility that they just don't know at this point going in? Well, you, you can never be sure. It's sort of like a tip off of a basketball game. You expect X, Y, Z to happen and Joel Embiid to dominate. But depending on what happens when the game starts, it may not be the same. In surgery, you have a plan and you have an idea. You always want to preserve meniscus and repair it if it's feasible and healable. It may not be in this case with the flap and the fact that it's the second time. And that leads to the trim, which is quicker recovery but, you know, long-term potential downside. And so I think his surgeon will end up deciding to do what's best for the patient, for Joel Embiid, for the long-term when he, she gets in there. 
Hey, as you know, it is the biggest game in the world. The Super Bowl is this week, and we've got some Fanatics odds and odds powered by Fanatics Sportsbook here. Some interesting things. Of course, obviously the line, the 49ers are laying two points. The over-under is 47 and a half. Very interesting. And here's a here's a cool parlay here, a four-leg same-game parlay. Christian McCaffrey and Travis Kelsey, anytime touchdown scores. And then Christian McCaffrey, 95-plus rushing yards. And Travis Kelsey, 80-plus receiving yards. If you hit all four of those, that is a big parlay. So a four-leg same-game parlay. And those are odds powered by Fanatic Sportsbook. Enjoy. So uh, to wrap this up about Joel, we obviously you talk about how big he is. And he came into the NBA with the very small, is it the navicular bone, right? Yes. One, is that one of the smallest in the foot? No, I'm not, not maybe the smallest, but it's a smaller bone in the foot and it's yeah. a poor blood supply. The navicular, if my recollection serves correctly, he's had some back issues. Of course, he's had knee issues before. I am in no way, shape, or form calling him injury prone in any way, shape, or form. It's just there's a lot of force. It's well known for every pound of weight that we have on our body, just in normal daily life, that translates to at least five to 10 pounds of force across the knee. But when you're running, jumping, and playing basketball, every pound of force can be up to 25 pounds of force across your knee. And you see how it multiplies in the activities that he does. And uh, this is what happens sometimes and it's unfortunate. And, and and he also had the small lateral meniscus tear in his right knee a few years ago. Is that more a sign of his size, or do you think there's an issue with the knees, uh, you know, arthritis, anything like that? Well, hard to say not having examined him, but certainly uh, bigger guys like this put more stress on different parts of their body, as we talked about the multiplier. And the lateral side of the knee it takes on more stress. That's just the way that it's built uh, in terms of its shape, uh, more uh, force per square centimeter or square millimeter in force on the lateral outside of the knee. And that's in all of us. And so it's multiplied in someone like Embiid. So in your, in your, I don't want to say in your heart, because you, you come from, you have a great medical mind. So what do you think is the result of this from everything that you've seen? Because I see you on Twitter, and then I'll I'll get in touch with you during a game, and you seem to know most of the time what injury has occurred. What, what do you think is the result of this? Well, what we do is use our insider knowledge of seeing these injuries, seeing the videos, having treated these high-level athletes, and putting together – what the decision-making process might be for an athlete and quite honestly for a team, et cetera. And that's why we're looking at essentially the end of the regular season with the possibility of return if things go in their favor for the postseason. But I don't know that I'd go so far as to say likelihood, you know, the possibility remains open. I hope he comes back for these playoffs and does very well. I hope it's a very small meniscus tear, but by definition saying that it's a flap means that it is likely much more than 15 to 20% of the meniscus this time, which leads to the bigger issues here. And uh, discretion is often better part of valor. You don't want to rush the big fella back for long-term detriment. And I'm sure the Sixers and MB will make the right decisions. But right now, it would be fantastic news if he could have this scope and return for the playoffs. But I don't know that I would count on it at this point in time. Well, we appreciate, and I know you've been heavily on the NFL season. I, the NBA playoffs are like two and a half months away. So he's got two and a half months, I believe mid-April, mid-April. Um, so two and a half months, um, you might be against it, huh? Well, look, two and a half months, you know, we talked about six weeks minimum recovery time. So that's certainly not, that's only a month and a half, but you got to remember, you got to be slow on the ramp up and what have you. So uh, look, I would keep hope alive that uh, there's a possibility of a comeback this season. 
I don't know that I would count on it. That's all I'm saying, right? And in the end, I think Sixers fans would want what's best for Embiid in the long run, not just this season. And that's what everyone wants. And when you factor that in, it might be a little slower to return because a displaced flap means there's enough of the meniscus torn. It's not just a frayed edge. There's enough torn where A, you have to have surgery. And that's what I was saying. B, that implication is it's a significant percentage of the meniscus, which then leads to a bigger deal. So reading the tea leaves, I'm glad that there's hope that he could come back and let's hope that it comes true, but I wouldn't exactly count on it right now. And I hate to be the bearer of news and I'd love to be wrong there and have him back healthy ahead of the playoffs. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you, it, it just stinks to see him go through this every single year because he's gotten better as a player every year. MVP last year, looking like the MVP this year, and he's not going to have a chance now, it looks like, at the MVP. So it's tough when you see such a great talent uh, be held back by all these injuries time and time again. I would agree. And look, you know, I would argue that uh, in these playoffs and towards the end of the year, the injuries kind of derailed the Eagles as well, some key injuries. So unfortunately, they do happen. Yes, they do, and we're always checking in with you because we have injuries in Philadelphia a lot. Um, and, and Dr. David Chow, thank you so much for your time. And you see it right there, Sports Injury Central, SICscore.com. That is my source for injury information. And I appreciate you taking the time with us. Thank you, John. Oh, I'm so flagrant.